everybody, it's Kevin. In this video, I am going to be talking about the link between obesity and the virus that everybody is talking about. Uh, we hear a lot that obesity doesn't matter, you can be healthy at any size, doesn't matter how much you weigh, none of that is, oh, that is just a sideshow, it's just um, something that diet culture tells you is a problem. Well, it turns out that being obese is a problem. We've known that. You know, there's certain group of people, I won't name names, who say that it's not a problem. Others like me have known for a while that it is a problem. And it's something that we need to tackle. So it's not just a, an issue of diet culture. It's literally killing people. This one is from Medical News Today. Latest evidence on obesity and COVID-19. So some researchers around the world have been Noticing that people who are obese tend to die from the virus a lot more than others. So let's take a look here. Um, we go down. Early data seems to suggest that people with obesity are more likely to become severely ill due to COVID-19, the disease caused by the novel coronavirus. Uh, now it's going, that's, so that's the hypothesis, but we're going to get into why here. So the evidence so far, this article summarizes preliminary data. In China, where the outbreak began, data from 383 patients showed that having obesity was associated with a 142% higher risk of developing severe pneumonia associated with COVID-19. Uh, they found the same thing in New York and then again in Seattle. Uh, it is important to note that this particular study, the one in Seattle, I'm assuming, only looked at 24 patients, so there are some limitations with that study but it, it wouldn't surprise me in, in my experience people with obesity are less healthy overall and i don't i don't i'm not trying to like judge people but that's just the truth that's just my observation that they usually have other comorbidities like too much fat in the blood too much sugar in the blood diabetes um you got pulmonary hypertension they've got sleep apnea because they can't sleep you know there's so much fat around their neck they can't get enough air, so they're on BiPAP the entire night. In Seattle, uh, let's go down here. Yeah, there we go. As in Seattle, 85% of the patients with obesity required mechanical ventilation compared to 64 without the condition. Moreover, 62% of the patients with obesity died of COVID-19 compared to 36 without it. That's staggering. That's like an 80% increase risk. Okay, so 36 to 62, that's, um, that's alarming. Okay, why is obesity a risk factor? People with obesity are more likely to have re higher resistance in the airways, you know, pulmonary hypertension, lower lung volumes, and weaker respiratory muscles. They're also not fitter. You know, Mark Ripito has this great line. He says, strong people are hard to kill. Okay, obese people are not strong. They have a lot of mass, but they don't have a lot of strength. Um, you know, poor metabolism, uh, poor joints, poor everything. So obesity is also associated with diabetes, heart disease, and kidney disease, all of which likewise increase risk of developing pneumonia. Setting these issues aside, high blood pressure, high cholesterol levels, and prediabetes could make people more susceptible to, susceptible to infection. And all of these things are associated with obesity, especially high blood pressure, because the more mass you have, the more veins you have to create. I mean, the more arteries you have to create. And what's what contributes to high blood pressure? Large volume, large length total of all your arteries because your heart has to pump that much more thing is the more mass you gain um, doesn't necessarily mean your heart's going to get stronger the only way to make your heart stronger is to be fit but when you're carrying around all this extra weight it's hard to get fit right it's hard to exercise so it's just this degenerative cycle this data the data are emerging showing that hyperglycemia that's too much uh, sugar in the blood even in the range where diabetes cannot be diagnosed is a strong and independent predictor of a severe course of COVID-19. I don't know if it's obesity itself that's creating it or if it's all of the comorbidities that they're talking about, like the restricted lungs, the pulmonary hypertension, the sleep apnea, the impaired immune function, too much sugar, too much fat in the blood. Could be any of that. And this is what I mean, is that obesity is like smoke. Where there's smoke, there's fire. And I don't know a lot of people who are obese and they are really healthy. So when they say healthy at any size, Yes, technically you can be healthy at 300 pounds, but I don't care that you can. I don't care that there are some outliers. What I care about are averages and medians. And the average obese person is not healthy. 
and let's quit pretending that they are. I'm not trying to shame them. I'm not saying that we need to shame them and tell them that they're lazy gluttons. That doesn't help either. But it is a problem, and we shouldn't try to gloss over the obesity and say, oh, it's okay, you can be healthy at any size. That, to me, is a cop-out. Let's go to the other one, uh, Science Daily. Obesity linked with higher risk for COVID-19 complications. Study raises concern that COVID-19 vaccine will be less effective for those with obesity. Uh, I'm not going to get too much into the vaccine. That's kind of like, I don't know, they're developing it. We'll see when it comes out. Probably not till next spring, but what do I know? I'm not really following it. This research comes from University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Uh, so right here in the United States. This is, look at this. Researchers examine the available push, published literature on individuals infected with the virus. Remember, a year ago, nobody knew about this thing, so we don't have a lot of literature, and found that those with obesity were at a great, greatly increased risk for hospitalization, 113%. Wow. More likely to, to be admitted to ICU, 74% and higher, and had a higher risk of death, 48%. Uh, so those are big numbers there. I wouldn't, I wouldn't ignore those. No, 113%? Man. And again, is it the obesity or is it all the comorbidities that come with obesity? I imagine it's the latter. Uh, let's see. A team of researchers at UNC collaborated with senior author World Bank Health on the paper. Obesity Review. So I should probably go look that up. Um, this just goes into how they set it up. But well, I want to get down here. Metabolic changes caused by obesity, such as insulin resistance and inflammation, make it difficult for individuals with obesity to fight some infections. That's interesting. So now obesity has, uh, in, ha leads to an impaired immune system. I didn't even think about that. A trend that can be seen in other infectious diseases, such as influenza and hepatitis. Uh, during times of infection, uncontrolled serum glucose, that's hyperglycemia, can impair immune cell function. So uh, looking at this other paper here, they were citing, you know, the, they had other reasons why obesity might be contributing to this because obesity is associated with diabetes, heart disease, skin disease. This didn't even mention the impaired immune function. So if you go over here, they're talking about impaired immune function. So it's just one more thing. Individuals with obesity are also more likely to experience physical ailments that make fighting this disease harder, such as sleep apnea. Yes, because they can't sleep. They have too much fat around the neck, which increases pulmonary hypertension, restricted airways, um, or a BMI that increases difficulties in a hospital setting with intubation. I'm telling you, you do not want to be hospitalized or be a patient if you're obese. It's hard to move. It's hard to get into the bed. It's hard for the care team to take care of you. It just sucks. Like you don't, you don't want to be sick. You don't want to break a bone and be obese. I've had obese patients with broken bones or new joints, and they can't even move. And it takes two or three people to lift them. You have to get the, you know, the mechanical lift and put them in the hoist and move them from the bed to the chair. It's it's tough, right? It makes recovery harder. It makes everything harder. Roughly 40% of Americans are obese, and the pandemic's resulting lockdown has led to a number of conditions that make it harder for individuals to achieve a healthy, sustaining weight. So now it's this, like, degenerative cycle, right? So they were overweight before. Now they're stressed out. Now they have fewer recreational opportunities. Now they have increased social isolation. So all of that stress, all that loneliness, all that boredom is only going to contribute to the problem. That leads to less immunity and more comorbidities in the future. It only exacerbates the problems that they had, and it's going to make it harder for them to overcome it. We're not only at home more and experience more stress due to the pandemic, but we're also not visiting the grocery store, which means we're just sitting around more. Um, and there's more emphasis on highly processed junk foods and sugary beverages, which increase the risk of excess weight gain. So again, whatever problems they had before the pandemic are only worse now. So I just wanted to highlight this article or these two articles. And actually, here's here's the, uh, the published research paper, Obesity and Impaired Metabolic Health. I should probably go through this and take a look at it. It's going to be really technical and science-y, so I'm not going to do uh, another video on this. I try to highlight the, the articles about the articles because it's just easier to read. But anyway, I highlight this for a couple of reasons. One, yes, you can be healthy at any size. Probably not. And when I see people saying, oh, just love your body and it doesn't matter how much you weigh. And then I see data like this that show that obese people are going to the hospital more frequently. I get kind of upset because some ideas are unhealthy and some ideas are, I don't want to say dangerous, 
so many ideas are just false. Because when we have a pandemic like this, a real pandemic, and people with obesity, obese individuals are going to the hospital more often, and it's shown that it is a strong risk factor for COVID-19, you know, we need to reevaluate that idea. The other reason I pointed out is because it's more important than ever to take care of yourself, and the importance of self-care is really important. So if you are obese, I'm not trying to shame you, but it is a problem that you need to start taking care of. Um, look, here's an ad for Noom right here on the side. Uh, I'm not trying to promote Noom, but it's something that can be fixed, and it's something that you need to start working on today. I don't care if you work with me, somebody else. Definitely get a dietitian. I think dietitian could really help you there, especially a dietitian who's been obese herself. That's even better if you can find one. Um, it's easier than ever to find them. You need to start getting off these medications. You need to get, you know, the personal trainer. It's going to take a whole team to get to get you to where it is that you want to go. Because the thing is, you're weaker and you're more fragile when you're obese. Obese people are not strong, robust people. They have a lot of mass, but they're not, they're clearly not dealing with these viruses nearly as well as normal weight people. Because obesity comes with a lot of usual suspects. The high blood pressure, pulmonary hypertension, the sleep apnea, etc. I hope you enjoyed this article review. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my free resources. I'll make other article reviews in the future. In the meantime, eat right, take care of yourself, and I will see you in the next video.